Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be working on find the closest palindrome. And in this one you're given a string n representing an integer and you want to return the closest integer not including itself which is a palindrome. And if there's a tie return the smaller one. So the closest is defines the absolute difference we've minimized between two integers. So here's the first example. So 121 is the closest one to 123. And then for one, um, here's one, two and zero are palindromes but zero is smaller. So that's what you return. So this number is really big, so you can't just like manually try things. I can't be like, okay, let me try n, then let me try n minus one, then n plus one, then n minus one, then n plus two. That way I'm trying the one smaller first if there's a tie. There's just way too many digits for that. So instead, what you're gonna wanna do is, you're, there's a few ways to do it. But one of the ways is take your number and figure out like how do I make small changes to, to make sure it's a palindrome and keep the numbers close to it. And then maybe it's like one of those. And so what I would recommend for this problem is figure out like, okay, for this number, like, let me just think of like one thing I can do to try to make it a palindrome and like try to submit that and then see for what numbers that's failing. And then for that, try to figure out how I can cover that case and then so on. Cause this one is kind of tough to find all the prop, all the um, like things you're failing, all the corner cases without actually like submitting, I would say. But let's take a look at a bunch of them. So the first simple thing we could do is like, let's just say we have a number like, let's have an array here. Let's start with a small number like, 123 in this case. So how can we how can we like turn this into a palindrome? So for a palindrome, um, every pair like the first and the last number have to be the same. The second have to be the same, and so on and so on and so on, right? So basically, one of the things we can say is like, well, maybe if we just turn this three into a one or this one into a three, we can do that. Or or maybe we want to turn them both into some common number in between. And so let's think which one would be better, turn one into the other or turn them both into a common number in between. Well, this digit is the ones value, so it's not super important. This is the this is the hundreds. So if we change this number, this will change the number a lot. So ideally we wanna keep the big, the big digits the same, like the biggest digit we wanna almost never change if possible. So the best thing to do would just be turn this digit into this. We don't wanna like meet in the middle, make it like two and two or something, because then we're basically adding a hundred, where if we're changing this, we're only adding or subtracting like a couple. So we're just gonna say, let's just turn all the digits that are worth less into the bigger ones. And then that'll make it palindromic. So we could do this. And that is the solution here, right? So let's just say that. So just get all pairs, turn all digits with less value into their bigger um, counterparts. And so that will work sometimes, but sometimes it won't. So if you try to just code this and submit, you'll see like for what it fails. And the number that it fails for, I'll do examples like this. So if we do that for 129, we'll say like, okay, well, we'll just turn this nine into a one because that's our strategy. But actually the best thing here is 131. So how do we get 131 from this? Like, well, like what else do we have to check for? So maybe we can make some small modification to make that. And so the idea is when we're turning every digit into its counterpart, basically what we're really doing is we're just taking the first half and reversing it. In this case, there's a middle number, so we're not reversing that, but we're reversing everything else, right? So if we have a digit, something like this, we're basically saying, okay, let's just take this 922 and reverse it. So and that's our new number. So what are some things we could do? Well, we could change this number and that would reverse it, but that would change our number by 100. But this is the middle, so this can be any value we want, like in this case, or if it was a pair, we could still change this value and then it would it would reverse its pair, but still changing this value is still gonna be better, right? We can't just change this value because then these values still won't match. But what if we change this value? So what's the smallest we can do? Well, we can just like add one or subtract one. So maybe if we add one and do our old strategy, now we get 131, which is actually the best. So maybe we could say that, like get least significant digit in first half of the string add one or subtract one try both then reverse so basically what we're going to say is like we'll try 131 and then we'll also try 111 and see like which one's better and in some cases 111 would be better, like you would have to subtract, right? So let, I guess let's just think of a case. So if we go back 129, so if we do the reverse of that number, if this is our number, 
So the best thing here is 9, 19. And so the, the subtraction would give you the best because if we just do a simple reverse, we'll get 929. So we can write that down. We got 929. Um, if we do a add, we'll get 939. And if we do a subtract, we'll get 919. And our original number was 921. So 919 is the best. So this will give you like most of the stuff, just like, and I think that that's how I was thinking of like, okay, I need to make them the same. Like, like what's the least significant digits? Those are gonna be worth the least, so I can change those. Because if I change the biggest number here, changing this by one digit is worth more than changing the rest of the number to anything you want, right? Like if we have, um, let's say we have uh, this, changing this number to a two is more impactful than changing everything else to whatever, right? Like this is a less of a change. So that's kind of the idea. So this will handle most of the cases. And once again, you can try to code this and submit it and see what else you're missing. But we're still gonna be missing a couple. And so what if our number is 11? So let's try a strategy with 11. And there's a few more, um, but yeah. So these last two are kind of tricky, but, the, but they both kind of basically do the same thing, just kind of the reverse. So if we do this, well, we can't take this number itself because it's already a palindrome. So we can't just like do that. But what if we take the one digit and change it? So here, think about what digit you change. If I change this, then I also have to change this one too. So I have to change the one that I'm actually flipping. So what if I like add one? If I add one, I'll get 22. What if I subtract one? I'll get zero. But the actual number that you want to return for 11 is actually nine because nine is palindromic. Well, how do I go from 11 to nine? And the idea here is when you go down from a power of 10 to a number with less digits, which we're doing here, like how do we capture that, right? Like we have some number like a hundred and how do we go down to less digits? And so the idea here, and this will work both ways is if we're going down from a power of 10 to a smaller power of 10, that number of digits. So let's say we have a number with N digits, you know, whatever, like, this, um, we can just take the number with n minus one digits and just make it all nines. And that's gonna be like the, the the one that we hit first. So when we go down to a smaller number of digits, the first number we hit is palindromic, right? Nine and, and basically that. So we can check for that for 10. So we could say like, okay, well, let's just go down to a smaller number of digits and make every digit a nine. So 10 is two digits. So we'll just have nine that's one digit. So that's another case is go down to n minus one digits and make them all nines. And then the last case is basically the, the other version of this is if we go up digits, right? If we have a number like nine or 99 or something and we go up. So if let's say we have 99, 99 technically I think will work with one of these because you can turn the nine into a 10 and then reverse, but then like the number of digits changes in the thing that you're like adding to. So it's still kind of weird. So it's still easier to like double check with this one. But the idea here is like, like if we, so yeah, like I said, if we add one, I think it will work still. But basically when you have these 99s or some numbers that are close to a hundred, when you go to the next power of 10, right? So we have like 99 is like close to 10 squared. But when you go to the next power of 10, the first palindrome you always hit is just gonna be like one with a bunch of zeros and then a one. So that's, that's the other one we can check for is like whatever number we have, let's just check for the number with one more digits than that and make it start with a one and end with a one and have everything in the middle zeros. So for 99, it would be, okay, we wanna have one more digit than two, so we'll have three digits like this. And so go up digits, check for n plus one with pattern one. I don't necessarily know if you, you can either do it this way or you could put in more logic into adding numbers and just making sure like if I do add numbers and my number of digits changes, I handle that correctly. Um, or you can just check, is your number like all nines? I think the only numbers that it, like this is needed for is like, I think honestly, it's just, it's just, it's just gonna be um, a, a, 
a number with all nines. That's gonna that's like the only edge case there. So you could check for that as well. If your number's all nines, it should return the, the, the next power of ten plus one. But yeah, basically now, so let's let's take a look at all the numbers we generate from from some number we have now, like 123. And we're basically guaranteed, if we do all these, that one of these is the answer. So we just generate all of them, and then whichever one's the closest is the answer. So for 123, first we'll just try the standard reverse, which is 121. Then we'll try adding one, so that will be 131. Subtracting one will be 111. Um, the, the number with less digits with all nine, so 99. And the number with more digits with, um, with just the one, so it'll be like this. Then you just check which one's closest, and in this case, it's 121. So if we have some big number, we can kind of do the same thing. Okay, so we have like 9, 4, 2, something. And then, yeah, for the reversal, it just depends on like if it's odd or even. So if it's even, you reverse all three or, you know, the whole thing. And if it's odd, then you reverse everything, but you keep the middle one there. So in this case, you would reverse it like this. So that you just check for like, is it an odd or even palindrome? But yeah, in this case, let's take a look at all the numbers we make. So if we just reverse, so we'd have nine, four, three, reverse, so three, four, nine. If we add one, we will add one to the least significant digit. So we'll add one over here. And then we will get nine, four, 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 nine. And then if we subtract one, we'll get a two. So it's gonna be nine, or two, two, four, nine. If we go to the digit with less numbers with um, all nines, that's just this. So nine, 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 nine. And then the one with more numbers, so this is six, so we want seven digits, so it's just gonna be until three, four, five, like that. And then one of these is gonna be equivalent, like one of these is gonna be the closest, and that's what you can do. Like I said, I don't think you need this 999 one. Um, uh, sorry, this one, you can just check. I think this only happens if your digit is all nine. So you can just check if my digit is all nines, return that number plus two, I guess, is always the case. Because no matter what you have, right, if your number is this, the best palindrome is always gonna be that number plus two. So you can do that as well. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's kind of hard to find all of these, but the, the whole idea behind this problem, the thing you wanna think about is I can't like brute force it so how do I take my number and, and like what digits do I change? And this, and this does happen in a lot of problems where like I can change digits of a number and I want to keep it as close to the number as possible. And the main takeaway is you want to change the least significant digits you can because that will make your number as close as possible. Okay, so let's take a look at the code. So essentially we get the length of our number and then, uh, oh yeah, so the other thing I didn't say is if our digit is single digit, then like we don't need any of these things. So if any digit is single digit, like if it's like an eight, we can just return that number minus one. Because if it's single digit, um, the digit above and the digit below will be both palindromes and the digit below will be smaller. So yeah, if it's single digit, return that number minus one. So we get our number and then we figure out the number with more digits and less digits. So the number with less digits is all nines. So it's just like a power of 10, right? Like if this number is five digits, the number with more digits is just 10 to the sixth. And then the number with less digits is just 10 to the fifth minus one. So either one. Okay. And then, um, and then we get the half that we're reversing, right? So, so we're only gonna be reversing half of our number. And then we basically build the same exact number without changing anything. The number that's one smaller, the number that's one bigger, and then we get all of those, right? So the all all the nines, the one zero 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 one, um, which is these two, and then the the number that's smaller, the number that's the same, the number that's bigger, and then we sort them, and then we just figure out like which one's closest in return. And so the build palindrome just depends on if your palindrome is even or odd, how many um, like uh, when when you reverse, how much you re return, right? So, like I said, if your number is like nine four two five, like this. When you do the actual reversal, you will only reverse this section, not this, right? This stays in the middle. You wanna keep it the same number of digits. You don't wanna add a digit because that would make the number way bigger. So you just, so when you reverse, you're just gonna reverse like this. Yeah, I think there's like other ways to do it, but this is like the way I did it. And yeah, the main thing is I would recommend try to build these simple things where you just do like a simple reversal. Um, 
and then like the just this first one right you just take the first part reverse it and then you can literally just run it and see what numbers fail and figure out like i think for this one that is kind of nice if you're having trouble understanding like why you need these things just try one or two of them see what fails and then like run through your logic with those numbers and be like oh, okay for those this is what happens and then if you don't understand why you need these same thing just just only write these three and then i think you can handle some of these with this as well um but basically yeah the idea is just write as much as you can and then if you're not thinking of edge cases, just run it. And that's what Leekode's for. It has like a thousand test cases or something for this thing. So, yeah. Okay. And the runtime for this is like basically minimal because this is just an 18 digit number that we're like reversing like five times or something. Or, you know, we're building five numbers that are 18 digits. So I would say this is basically in reality like a 101 because it's just like you're building an 18 digit number, you know, five times which is like 18 times five or whatever it's meaningless um yeah and i think yeah because but and, and also yeah the main thing to recognize is like the worst solution would just be check n for a palindrome check n, n minus one check n plus one so right away um the main thing to look for is this number is huge i can't do any kind of linear traversal so the only things i can do is build palindromes close to it or some kind of binary search so I think that is actually one of the solutions, some kind of binary search, because if you binary search 10 to the 18th, that will pass for sure. But something above like 10 to the seventh thing fails. So you're gonna have these problems a lot where your your constraints are like 10 to the 10th or 10 to the 15th or whatever it is. Um, basically anything, I think 10 to the ninth is most common. And basically you can recognize that like linear won't work for those. So find something else. Um, yeah, and I think that's gonna be all for this one. Hopefully it was helpful. If it was, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.